Hello, my name is Dr. Shumbles, and on this video we'll be going over some gameplay on the specifically Perona and Green Yamato matchups. We are about to see two matches against each of these leaders. The reason why I decided to upload these leaders and not others, it's because I don't believe there's much gameplay against them, and they are very annoying matchups against you. Although, by the way, by the time I'm recording this, there are some more videos about them um, when it comes to Red Purple Law defeating them. Taking away Sakazuki and NL, which are the most popular uh, leaders that people talk about, these do kind of go unseen. And so I just wanted to, just a quick upload, just to follow up the guide as well. I would also like to say that uh, I w really wanted to make uh, gameplay videos on the other leaders I'm still going to do. Uh, but when it comes for, for example, Moria, uh, it just needs a video on its own because it's the most unpredictable matchup when it comes to, to all the negative matchups uh, and all the leaders that counter Red Propolo. This is because although his hand is not consistent, he can always do something with, the, with whatever hand he has. So he's very un unpredictable to target his strategy and to counter it, you know? So I'm st still trying to figure it out. This as well as me not seeing him in the sim lately. I've only been seeing uh, green, yellow uh, Yamatos, uh, if I'm being completely honest. So it's getting really hard to get replays uh, on him. And the other two leaders, which are the Sakazuki and the NL. Uh, Sakazuki also needs a video all on its own, because he just he got an insane buff when it comes to consistency. Uh, not only that, they have already adapted their playstyle against Red Purple Law, uh, on the seam, so it became much harder to to play against it. Uh, pretty much, they do what kind of NL does, which is uh, they take their lives early. Uh, they only answer your board. They can do this very easily thanks to the new consistency. Uh, and then they know as soon as they get to 8th on, they can play Moria and start changing the game around for free. When it comes to NL, uh, it's the opposite. I don't believe there's much more that I could tell you about his strategy. Uh, I've already talked about a little bit against him when he, come, when he was the OP05 guide. On OP06, he, he keeps the same, to be honest. Not only that, if he's not playing the Sky Island, he's playing a much more luck-based uh, deck. This means he won't have consistency, but just like Moria, he can do s always something with the hand he has. But uh, because uh, his triggers and how the game will play will much more based on luck, this means there's not that much to adapt uh, from the, the example of the Sanji combo that I talked to you guys in how the game will go. If he plays a more luck based core of the deck, I mean, you can play normally most of the time. You guys know that he will still play Amatos and Katakuris and 7 cost drop mom. So you guys can still play around that. Uh, if he plays the Sky Island with those cards, I just gave you some more information. But on the other variant, there's not much to tell you guys, to be honest. Uh, it's just a little bit more luck based when it comes to triggers and how the game will go. Um, forgot to say, this is me editing right now. Uh, the reason why you only see two games uh, is because most of my replays got corrupted. <laughs> my footage got corrupted. I did have a really good green-yellow uh, Yamato replay as well, where she made that tactic that I talked to you guys about on the guide, where she attaches all on swings, that whiffs, and on the next turn, instead of her trying to build some board and then making another big swing, she attaches all on and swings. This uh, would be a really great demonstration because not only does she do, do that strategy, we also had Shuraya on the field, so you guys see how much value Shuraya had against has against Green Yellow Yamato. So yeah, sorry about that. What you guys are seeing now are the two deck lists that I've been playing. I've been alternating between the two, so this is because uh, when it comes to promo log, this is the biggest difference in the deck lists. Uh, when it comes to Promo Law, uh, Promo Law has still a really good value, but he only has the best value when it comes to yellow matchups, pure yellow matchups. When it comes to variants with, for example, uh, green, yellow, Yamato, which has a green variant, Promo Law does not have as much value as he used to be. Uh, this is because even uh, with Yamato playing yellow, they, she plays uh, 6k bodies, which makes the drop of Promo Law not, not as uh, effective. Uh, because, well, he only drops 2k, so nobody will be in range of your leader ability. So I've changed it to just play more raise max, uh, 
uh, to try and counter this. Uh, still, uh, Promo Law will still have an insane amount of value against Katakuri and NL. So if you guys really, if you guys really want to play them, I, I still alternate between the two deck lists and I still love it. So the both of the uh, deck lists are doing pretty fine actually. So with this said, let's just get into the matchups. The first one being the Perona matchup. This is where I believe I was still using the very first deck list on the guide. I don't really remember. By the way, these matchups are still... Um, they are valuable because you, I also didn't see Raju during the, the matchups. Your deck relies so much on gas and if you don't see Raju uh, to refill that gas, most of the time people will just play into Starve and they'll just starve you. So yeah, I believe these games are more transformative because you do not see the you do not see the radio. So you you need to adapt a little bit on your hand size and how you take lives. So here I just make an 8k swing, as you guys can see. Just make the 8k strategy. There's no need to build board because we know she can just uh, rest it and attack. So yeah. By the way, replays are not sped up. This is because if I want to say something else, I want to know I have the time to. <laughs> there you go. Playing Inupe. Now, I cannot KO this, so this just becomes kind of mandatory for me to use my leader ability. I'm going to take this early swing. Try and see some more cards on the board. Hopefully, Perona does not have that much aggression. Now, what you guys are about to see is a very uh, unique play because I am thinking about playing the kit, but I do play the Buena Fiesta like I'm about to do. This is because I was trying to find some 3k depletion. As you guys can see, there it is. <laughs> um, uh, because Perona plays a lot of 6k's uh, with her green variant. So if I can take away their... Um there are 6k drops, uh, this makes my game just much easier, so I decide to hold off to the kid, to the blocker kid, and just search for some more power depletion. This just to show that promo lot does not have value against this matchup a lot. So yeah, but you guys will still see how I use him. This is why this uh, uh, replay is still good. So there you go, here I decide to defend. I take away Shirai, Shirai does not have that much value here. Well, it does have because they do like to swing it with the leader, but they can just rest Shirai and take him away right away, so yeah. So I was hoping for a green uh, 6k, but it does drop the Borsalino, which is still in my range of my Gordon, so I'm just gonna take it out. Making sure he cannot... If he blocks, he does not block free 5k swings. And now we just build a lot of wards, so starting to go wide. I make two 5k swings. He counters, so I'm like, okay. He counters with a 2k or a 5k swing, so I'm like, okay, he probably does not have counters anymore. Because if he uses a 2k for a 5k swing, I mean, sure. He still counters anyway, so I'm like, okay. Was trying to get a blocker, but I got cards in hand. Which, to be honest, it's much better, because seeing on the board makes it much more predictable. As I cannot see his hand, obviously. Now, we ran out of gas. And here you guys are about to see a typical combo. This is why you kind of really need that 3k depletion uh, early and mid. There you go. I did not see optimal hand. I did mulligan, I believe. Now, you can either play this card or the Ryua. Ryua? I don't remember the name. So, yeah. This is most of the time the combo where they just deplete... Uh, Easily a card, a cost of a card, and just rest it and use this green variant of the deck. So she's trying to walk us into Starve. As she knows, we ran out of gas. I'm just making calculations, making sure I will regenerate the Dawn. I just go wide, there's no need. I kind of want to make her walk into the Starve uh, herself. She only has two cards in hand, so 
This is nice. There you go. Really wanted her to start using the blockers, but fine. So there you go. Here, it doesn't matter what I... What I deplete. I just go two 7k swings. First with Zoro Rush, there you go. He finally uses a blocker, so I'm like, fine, great. Another 7k swing. And he just gives up. <laughs> we had too much momentum. Next game is the Yamato. Now we do not see any Dawn regen, so I'm like, I need to mulligan this. Yeah, there you go. We still do not see any uh, Dawn regeneration besides the kid, which is not optimal, as you guys know. So, there you go. We need to adapt. Again, this is why I believe these replays have good value, because you, I do not see the most optimal hand in the beginning. And I do. we do see some of their combos. So, yeah. I just make a Garden swing here. I, I kind of want it, again, the, she does play um, a lot of 6k, so you would have a, a good value, but I was trying to bait him as blocker for the first swing of Yamato. I left a dawn up, this was because I was thinking about playing uh, Buena Fiesta, but I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna make sure that I can um, counter the first attack, and I can keep some cards in hand, so I just use... Two two case. The banish combo with the first swing is very powerful. I mean, not only does she take two lives and makes her ability live, those two cards do not come to hand. So yeah. Now here we can play uh, with the kid. I drop the kid. Just gonna take away the Onami. Play the Beppo. There you go. Starting to build momentum. We do take a two K out of hand. It's fine, she did have a lot of cards in hand, and it we already ran out of gas, so yeah. So here, normally, uh, I could think, uh, we'll see, wait, 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 let's just wait for the replay. So she does make a 7, queen, seven uh, swing, I could block with Kid and use Otama, but I was so low on cards in hand, I was like, might as well just make the her ability live. Some people do make the mistake of um, of making of sorry of countering that attack as well. Uh, you do would like to counter out of two attacks, but I was so low in Dawn. I just decided to just take it away. There you go. Our race max did get its its most value. We make a six k swing. They counter. I'm just gonna make a lot of 6 swings. There you go with Zoro Rush. He does get a trigger. Completely fine to be honest. I do not mind this. He does use two 1k counts, so I'm like, maybe he's uh, out of counters, so I just make a, another 6k swing with Blocker Kid. We still have uh, one uh, Blocker Kid. Uh, in case we need uh, to count uh, to block her attack If she plays the Jones which she could on curve play She would rest him, but she would only have a 5k swing Which is really easy to counter out of and even if she used uh, Jones to swing into a kid we could just counter out of it as well So she decides to go for the regeneration as we can see right now she just uses the two cost card to replace the cards. Makes a 6k swing, we counter out of it. She plays the blocker. I don't know the name of the cards, by the way. So, there you go, she does the regeneration. She's back to two lives. Alright, here I'm making some calculations because Beppo does not... Uh, will not regenerate the Dawn. Okay, she uses the blocker. I'm like, great. I make another 7k swing. Okay, I know she has a 2 counter now. I was about to swing with Bebo. I'm like, wait. I wouldn't uh, regenerate the Dawn. So, might as well just take that card on the field. If she plays Katakuri, she could have put that card back into life. Which would have a lot of value. And I've seen some green ye uh, yellow Yamatos do this. 
Now we can make a 7k swing with the uh, Beppo, which will regenerate the Dawn. We got all the Dawn back, thanks to the two kits and the Beppo. He got the Amaru. I'm like, okay, we got two good cards out of hand. Now I'm going wide. I normally you shouldn't do this because I I've but I've seen this play so many times that I automatically know what to do. So I just do this, right? I did these swings. And most of the time you do you would like to leave these two um blockers up. But I know what she will play. The only thing she can play is Jones, attach three down to Yamato, swing into life, and then just swing the last two uh rested uh, Dawn into Jones and swing into life to finish game. I already know they always do this uh <laughs> here on Tendon, so I already knew I had the two counters, so I just counter out of it. I'm like, okay, I won. I, th there's nothing she could have done uh, differently. We just pinned her into the wall. We just let this go. And next turn we can just attach everything. And she just leaves. So yeah, there you go. This was the two matches. Hope you enjoyed. Also, I would like to say, I did see some videos on YouTube. And I found out my deck lists are uh, very similar to some of the YouTubers. Not only that, there's some YouTubers making good uh, content on Red Purple Law. Uh, so I'm just gonna shout them out and leave their links in the description. This being Kyle Gasly, sorry if I'm saying the names wrong. And the other one is Jean Suko. I found out that my decklist was very similar to his uh, when it came to playing more race max. The only thing I believe I changed was take away one Otama and play the one blocker law. I think that was the only change. So when I found out, I was like, wow. <laughs> insane i'm just gonna leave their links in the description so once again thank you so much for watching like and subscribe if you enjoy red purple law and goodbye